Okay, very good morning everybody. So today we will be covering the wafer mounting and wafer sawing uh, topic. So as you already know that this is the uh, wafer mounting process and this is the wafer sawing process. Okay. So the objective of wafer mounting process is to stick the wafer to the wafer ring using the mounting tape. So this is to make the mounted wafer become a uh, uh, as a carrier for the wafer sawing process since uh, you need something to put it on the um, uh, wafer sawing chuck so you need to have a uh, mounted wafer so material for mounting uh, process first you need a wafer ring then you need a wafer and number three is the mounting tape and if you are using a manual mounting process you need a scrapper right so if not there will be a roller on the a mounting machine however for your project so you are using a manual mounting process you need a scraper all right so once you combine everything in so there are you get a, a mounted wafer so what is a wafer so wafer is a round slice of semiconductor materials uh, typically silicon so we have a microchips in it so this is the microchips uh, in the wafers so normally uh, wafers you have like a gallium arsenide you have a germanium <coughs> but uh, typically we are using silicon so wafers are divided into four criteria uh, the first one is the wafer size uh, the second one is the wafer thickness the third one is the die size and the fourth one is the source rate width i'll explain in the uh, next slide this is the current wafer trend in the market so wafer size uh, the trend is increasing from 6 inch it all start to increase to 8 inch now in production is 12 inch in development is increasing to 18 inch right while the wafer thickness is in, is in decreasing trend means the wafer thickness is uh, getting thinner mean uh, Previously, the starting uh, wafer thickness is 600 micron. Now it's reducing to 50 micron. So 50 micron, it is uh, very thin, is thinner than the A4 paper. Uh, the die size, the trend is uh, uh, decreasing as well, since the all the electronics gadget is always uh, become uh, smaller and smaller. So, uh, however, this die size is depends on the package. And source strip width, uh, the trend is uh, decreasing as well. So the trend is uh, the bigger is 120 micron now is decreasing up to 40 micron source rate. However, the smaller the source strip width, the challenging is very high in terms of the chipping performance. This is to show you the impact of wafer size. To the number of dice per wafer as you can see if, if the wafer size is 6 inch and with the same die size uh, you only can cater about 8 dice per wafer when you increase the wafer size from 6 inch up to 8 inch or more so the number of die increase per wafer as you can see from this 8 inch wafer you are using the same die size on the uh, bigger wafer size so the die size is all increasing from 8 inch uh, from 8 dies per wafer for 6 inch it can rise up to the 16 dies per wafer for 8 inch so if you are using a 12 inch it is more and 18 inch is much much more so for source rate width, what is the impact of source rate width to the number of dice per wafer? So if you have the same dice diameter, for example, this is like 8 inch wafer and this is 8 inch wafer. However, the dice size is the same. But when the source rate width is wider, like this 120 and this is a thinner. So the wider source rate width can own, allocate minimum number of dice per wafer. But if you reduce the source rate width, it can cater uh, uh, more dice per wafer, right? So that's why the trend is going for a 
lower source rate waste however when you is uh, the you when the source rate is become narrower you need to invest more by uh, need a very high precision equipment and the chipping is much more uh, critical yeah all right so for wafer mounting process uh, this is the first assembly process before wafer sewing so a process whereby you need to place a mounting tape based on orientation of the bonding ram all right so as you can as you all know so for wafer mounter you have a wafer chuck then you put a uh, wafer ring and wafers then after that the mounting tape will come at the back of the wafers then there is a roller roll uh, the mounting tape so that it can stick with the wafer ring and the mount uh, on the wafer right so this is when you use a, a semi or fully auto mounter all right <clears throat> but uh, in order to proceed mounting process you need to check first the bonding diagram right the bonding diagram is like uh, uh, the plan the plan of your house right where by where you want to put instruction to put your uh, kitchen your halls and your rooms uh, for example the bonding diagram is the instruction to put the dies is in the, the two bonding pads here and the remaining is on top so if this is the wafer plan so you just put it into the mounting tape as per bonding diagram same mean like this the two bonding diagram here so you put orientation the bonding diagram same so mean if the wafer plan is here mean the orientation is zero all right so we refer to the bonding diagram too if the bonding diagram requests the two bonding pad is on top like this one is on below it's on top so you need to turn the wafer so that the wafer flat now from zero it become 270 so means uh, for this device the orientation will set to 270 instead of zero all right so you need to change the this one normally the orientation will be fixed by the engineers okay this is the reject criteria for wafer mounting process normally uh, when you do inspection this is the regular reject criteria found for wafer mounting the first one is the broken wafers okay uh, number two is air bubble at the wafer back so crack wafer so this is the crack line you can observe and scratches right scratches so scratches uh, normally is, is a handling issue while the broken air bubbles and crack wafer is uh, more towards uh, a thin wafer yeah. so as engineers you need to optimize the parameter at the wafer mounter and handling process uh, to solve all these problems so wafer dicing uh, wafer sewing also known as wafer dicing and some is called as wafer cutting so uh, but however it is the same uh, uh, items that have been called in regular names right so the objective of wafer sewing is to saw the mounted wafers and convert it to singulated dies so from a piece of wafers it already become a thousand of dies right so it becomes singulated dies so the material for wafer sawing process is the mounted wafers uh, then you add a diamond blade okay this is the diamond blade and uh, water as well right so at wafer sawing uh, there are three inspection area that you need to check so which consists of uh, the first one is top side chipping so the top side chipping is the on the wafer surface and the second one is the back side chipping which is uh, at the wafer back uh, you need to do the inspection and the third one is the side wall chipping side wall chipping is you need to flip the die and you need to inspect the side of the die itself and look into the uh, chipping criteria so take note for the top side chipping the uh, chipping criteria 
criteria is uh, not uh, touching the active area uh, which is pointed as the arrow when you, the chipping is touching the active area uh, in the uh, uh, arrow area then it's considered reject for the backside chipping the criteria is not more than 200 micron so on the right hand side you can see that the chipping had been measured is more than 200 micron is considered reject and while the sidewall chipping the criteria is uh, the the chipping cannot more than 30 percent of the die thickness yeah for from the uh, sidewall chipping you can see the chipping is is around 50 percent so it's considered reject because the chipping is more than 30 percent of die thickness so in order to achieve a very good uh, sawing quality there are few items that uh, you as an engineer need to evaluate to achieve a better sawing performance so for good sawing quality it is required to uh, assess the dicing parameters uh, the blade selection uh, good machine setup programming and the dicing technology as well so the dicing parameters is consists of feed speed blade rpm dicing method blade height and the water flow rate so let us go through uh, feed speed and blade rpm first so what is blade rpm blade rpm is how fast the blade rotate per minute so you can see that uh, in uh, disco sawing machine the blade rpm uh, level is around 10k up to 60k rpm yeah so so what is feed speed feed speed is how fast the chuck table move towards the blade it is, it is in an mm per second so you can see how the 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 blade is stay uh, in its position on the only chuck table is moving during the wafer sawing process and that is called as feed speed this slide is to show you the evaluation result for two blade types with a different rpm as you can see uh, on your left hand side is the chipping performance and the bottom one is the rpm which is start from 30k 35k 40k and 45k so an sd2000 in red uh, label is the backside chipping performance and sd3000 blade in the black label it is a backside chipping so as you can see for the sd2000 in red starting from 30k when you increase the rpm the chipping increase and same as well for the sd3000 in black label so once you increase the rpm from 30k to 45k the chipping is increased as well however uh, you can see the backside chipping performance for sd uh, sd2000 in the red label is much more lower compared to the sd3000 backside chipping so in this uh, to in this chart it shows that in terms of the backside chipping performance sd2000 blades is having a better performance in terms of the backside chipping so for sd2000 top side chipping in orange label uh, and uh, SD3000 topside chipping in blue label you can see that uh, the higher the uh, RPM it, it will have a lower uh, chipping performance however in uh, at 45k RPM SD3000 uh, topside chipping which is labeled in blue is much more lower than SD2000 for the uh, top side performance in uh, orange so we can conclude that uh, SD3000 blades have a better performance in terms of top side shipping uh, compared to the SD2000 so in order to have a good both uh, top side shipping and uh, back side shipping performance so you need to combine the sd2000 and sd3000 blade 
uh, using a step card uh, to help to achieve both uh, good results for top side and back side chipping. So, this is the uh, uh, plotting by uh, software in terms of the RPM performance towards the top side, back side, and sidewall chipping. All right. So you can see that this is the RPM, lower RPM, 30, then this is the higher RPM, 50, 50k RPM. Okay. So for top side chipping, when you increase the RPM, the chipping, the top side chipping become lower. All right. However, for backside chipping, it re react reversely. The higher the RPM, the higher the chipping. The objective is to have a lower chipping. So, if you are using a single blade to have a, a good top side, back side, and side wall, you need to select at the center. Since the center produce you uh, equally uh, low back side, side wall, and top side chipping. If, for example, you select high RPM, you only have a good top side chipping. However, for the back side chipping, you will have high uh, chipping occurrence here. So, this is just a reference only. So that, uh, however, uh, each wafer you need to do an evaluation before you you fix the parameter for the device, right? There are four dicing methods in wafer sawing process. So the dicing method will refer to the machine capability. So current uh, in the market there are two machine available, such as uh, the first one is single spindle dicing machine. This this is single spindles mean one blade. I uh, means uh, same like the the disco machine that we have in our lab, DAD3340, which is as one blade, which is called as single spindle. And the second one is double spindle dicing machine means there are two blades in a machine. Alright, so there are four types of cuts uh, for wafer sawing. One is single cut, number two is dual cut, number three is dual pass, and number four is step cut. So I will explain later what is all this for. So in terms of the capability single spindle dicing machine is only capable to do single cut and dual pass for dual cut and step cut you do not have the capability to do so for double spindle dicing machine it can do all cuts all right so what is the what is single cut actually so single cuts mean so whenever the if you have like 50 lines to cut the machine will cut one by one okay one cut and the second cut then until 50 line you will finish all right so how about dual cuts? So dual cuts, it have the machine have uh, two blades in a row. So one time, two blades will come out. So mean if you have 50 lines, it will cut to 25 lines, then it will complete. So mean it is faster, two times faster, right? Okay, one time cut two, then it will be faster. Rather than cut by one, one by one like single one. So dual cut is much more faster because uh, one time it cut two times all right so we come to dual pass what is dual pass dual pass is using one blade then it will cut the same position two times all right the blade thinness is same one then one more time cut one into how many percent into wafers and cut everything into the rounding tape all right so this is dual pass. So step cut. Step cut is using a thicker blade on the Z1 and a thinner blade on the Z2. See? So thicker blade, then thinner blade. Thicker blade, then thinner blade. This is called step cut. Alright? So why we need to do step cut? In, in terms of uh, uh, compared to the single cut everything alright okay for example if you want to cut a very thick wafers like 600 micron wafer thinness yeah so for example 
So for top side shipping, we can see when you single card, there is no issue. So it is accept and the step card also there is no issue. So it is accept. However, for back side shipping, it is a failure for single card. And you can see the step card is very smooth in terms of shipping uh, compared to the single card. Why? So you can you can imagine this when uh, you want to you want to do a karate on the chopping board, a thick chopping board. All right. For example, if the chopping board is thick. Then if you want to uh, chop the board into two, it you need to have a high pressure on it, and the result is not so good at the back because it is so you need to bang it so hard so that it can break into two. So step cuts means. You uh, cut the chopping board uh, 50% first. You you cut into 50%. Then you do a karate. It is much more uh, lower pressure to break it into two, and the result is also much much more better. So the pressure to cut into the thick wafer causing the uh, chipping uh, become higher. All right. So this is like the diamond diamond blades and this is the stress zone so this is where the cracks initiate yeah so take note the diamonds and the blades actually uh, will uh, the diamond will accumulate the the mounting tape uh, component as well so that it will produce more uh, stress zone into the actually causing it is more chipping area all right okay so let us Side. This is the, when you take out one die from the wafer and you inspect. So from the high backside chipping, you can see the backside chipping is failing because the spec is less than 200 micron. So this is you see the chipping is more than it's about 250 micron is considered fail. All right, for step cut it is more smooth, very nice. For sidewall chipping is still acceptable because it is uh, the the reject criteria is thirty percent of the uh, wafer thickness is about one hundred eighty micron and the chipping is only ninety four so it is accept. However, for step cut you see a very solid uh, sidewall performance yeah compared to the single cut. Then this is why uh, cut method is very. Uh, important to have a very good quality uh, in terms of soil performance uh, you want to define to use switch method so the blade height in uh, parameter in uh, wafer sawing is whereby uh, is according to the reference of the chart table height for reference right for example if you set your z height to 0, 0.00 mm so actually the blade will cut into the chuck table and damage it right so when you add up you increase your z height from 0 to 0 0.050 mean the blade will only cut until here 0 0.05 means it is referring to the table surface so this is the 50 micron height from the it will not go more than that so this is the uh, ref where the blade will cut only to 50 micron right okay this is the blade height parameter in wafer sawing so normally you see this uh, in device data okay so take note uh, as mentioned just now we have single cut dual cut dual pass and step cut so availability so single cut you can use single spindle or dual spindle so for however dual spindle you need to own one blade only because you get two bit if you own it one bit you can use it to, to perform single cut all right for dual cut it only can use dual spindle only and a dual pass you can use single spindle and dual spindle for step cut you must use dual spindle only so blade types for single cut dual cut and dual pass you only use one blade types only only step cut you use two blade types the first one must be thicker blade and the second one will be a thinner blade this is called a step cut the rest is using one type of blade only all right the blade height setting 
if you are using single card you only cut into the mounting tape only alright for example for single card and dual card you cut 70 micron only into the tape however dual pass you need to cut into the wafer uh, like uh, how many percent of the wafer then you cut through so this is the sequence one that you set for example this is the sequence one you set 0.2 the sequence 2 is set 0, 0.0 mean the cut one you use you cut 200 micron and the second one it cut 70 micron cut through but if you are using single cut you only put 0 0.07 in the sequence one only however for step cut you don't use a sequence so this uh, layout is only for uh, single spindle for step cut you have double spindle it only use uh, Z1 height and Z2 height so Z1 height for step cut using a blade type A thicker blade and uh, Z2 is the type B a thinner blade right for draw pass both are same blade so this is the blade parameter in wafer sawing for example you are using you want to do a single cut alright single cut for example the wafer thickness is 300 micron the tape thickness is 90 micron the instruction is you must do a single cut and to cut 30 micron into tape what is the blade height setting all right so what you need to do you only need to concentrate on the tape thickness because you want to cut into the tape so the tape thickness is 90 micron you want to cut in 30 micron into tape so tape thickness 90 micron cut into tape thickness is 30 micron so you minus so the remaining uncut tape is your blade height setting all right so means the blade will raise to will cut until here 60 micron then you stop all right so then you get the 30 micron into tape so if you increase the wafer thickness to 400 micron also all right then you tape thickness remain 90 micron your cut method still single cut the requirement is to cut 50% into tape what is the blade height setting ok now the requirement is to change from 30 micron to 50% into tape so what is the tape thickness the tape thickness is 40, 90 micron so 50% means 45 micron so you need to minus the 50% into tape so the remaining uncut tape is your blade height setting means now your blade height setting is 0045 in order for you to cut 45 micron into the mounting tape so you get 50% into tape alright that is for single cut so let's go okay, for this example on the example one so for dual pass wafer thickness is 300 micron the tape thickness is 90 micron so you are required to cut uh, into the dual pass so requirement cutting is 100 micron into wafer and the 30 micron into tape so what is the blade height setting so take note the dual pass is same blade cut two times on the same line right okay so what you need to do is uh, wafer thickness 300 micron you add up on the tape thickness so you the total thickness is uh, 390 micron so the task is to cut 100 micron into wafer so from 300 micron wafer thickness you minus the 100 micron uh, into the wafer so the balance uncut area is 200 micron so the uncut tape uh, you include it as well 90 micron so the total sum of the uncut area is 290 micron so the uncut uh, 290 micron is equivalent to your blade height setting sequence one is equivalent to 0 0.290 mm so for the second cut uh, the tape thickness is 90 micron which is into the tape so the requirement is 30 micron into tape so you cut into tape minus 30 micron so the remaining uncut tape is 60 micron so your blade height setting is equivalent to 0 0.060 mm so which is equivalent to remaining uncut tape area ok 
Okay, this is an uh, example 2 for dual pass. The wafer thickness has been increased to 600 micron. So the tape thickness remains the same. So the cut method you need to maintain as dual pass. So the task is to cut 50% into wafer and then cut 30 micron into tape. So what is the blade high setting? So what you need to do is to add up the wafer thickness and the tape thickness. So the total thickness is equivalent to 690 micron. So the task is to cut 50% into wafer which is 50% from 600 micron is equivalent to 300 micron. So the balance of wafer uncut area is 600 minus 300 micron so equivalent to 300. So you need to include the uncut tape thickness is 90 micron so the total thickness is 390 micron. So the blade height setting sequence 1 is equivalent to 0 0.390 mm. So the cut into the tape is the same uh, the tape thickness is 90 micron so you not you need to cut into tape 30 micron then the remaining uncut tape is 60 micron is equivalent to your blade height setting sequence 2 is 0 0.006 mm uh, wafer thickness 700 micron you have tape thickness of 90 micron. You are required to do cut method step cut. So the requirement cutting is 40% into wafer and 30 micron into tape. What is the blade height setting? So same like dual pass. You need to add up the wafer thickness and the tape thickness total 790 micron. So the requirement is 40% into wafer. So 40% from 70, 700 micron is 280 micron. So the balance uncut area is 700 minus 280. So this is uncut area is 420. Then you need to add up the tape is 90. So the un total uncut area is 510. So bed height Z1 is 510 mm. Okay. So means blade 1 raised 510 micron from chuck table. Alright, so for Z2 it's the same, 90 minus 30 micron into tape, so you remaining uncut tape is 60 micron, so the blade height setting is equivalent to uncut tape, so this is the 60 micron uh, 0.060 mm, so this is the blade height setting for Z1 and Z2. Single cut feature available is single spindle and double spindle sewing machine. So it involves only one blade type. Cut one time only with cut depth 30% into multi tape. So the cut depth is depending on your setting actually, but normally it's a 30% into multi tape. Dual cut feature available in double spindle sewing machine involve only with one blade type but use two same blade cut for cutting so one time cutting two blades come down so consider the fastest cut because two blades being used to cut simultaneously okay total of line to cut be reduced to half means for example a single cut you have 50 lines to cut so dual cut will reduce to 25 only so it is 50 percent faster so why you need to do dual pass? Feature available in single spindle and double spindle sewing machine. So involve only one blade type but blade cut into same source with two lines. Okay. So dual pass normally you want to remove the metal layer before you cut it through. Alright. So dual pass being used to remove the metal layer from source slit area before full cutting to improve back side chipping. So this is the reason you do the dual pass. So step cut feature available in double spindle sewing machine involve only with two blade types. The first the first blade is thicker and the second blade is thinner. So the first cut normally range 30 to 50 percent into wafer and the second cut 30 percent into multi tape. So this feature is used for thick wafers. So example for 600 micron wafer thickness and above. So to improve the best side chipping for sensitive wafer or any wafer thickness. Okay, water is very important component during the sewing process. It reacts as a coolant for the blade and wash the blade from silicon debris to ensure high quality toward the sewing process. 
There are three areas where water are allocated uh, through the soil process. One is shower. This is shower. A second is spray. And third is blade cooler. Okay, this is from uh, side view. Whereby shower it is spraying in the center of the blade. And cooler from side of the blade. And spray is from front of the blade. Okay. So this is the water flow rate assessment on wave of 185 micron that has been done previously. <coughs> so you can see when you use 0.8 liter per minute, this is the result. 1.2 liter per minute and 1.5 liter per minute. Okay. So so in terms of uh, mean, 1.2 liter is producing the lowest uh, chipping condition. In terms of standard stability, 1.2 have a stable uh, a condition as well. And you take a look for uh, 1.5 liter per minute, it have the maximum chipping of 80.8 micron. So this is uh, sidewall failure. So the maximum uh, sidewall chipping allowed is 55 micron. However, with 80.8, the water is too high causing it to have a higher chipping so this one is failed so sidewall chipping failure observed at 1.5 liter minute water flow rate setting and no sidewall failure on 8.8 .8 and 1.2 however 1.2 liter per minute provides significant lower sidewall chipping value compared to 0.8 and 1.5 right so doesn't mean that the higher the better so you need to evaluate uh, accordingly to the device that you've been used. So in this case, the 1.2 liter minute flow rate being selected. So take note, the uh, water is very important as well in terms of the silicon dust. If the water is too slow, it uh, you're not able to clean the bond pad clearly from the silicon dust. Yeah, and this will cause some uh, wire bonding issue. Uh, later so this is programming done by operator you see that suppose the line to be cut here but due to the uh, poor setup the cutting into the activity so this become reject all right and this is the sawdust okay silicon dust and this is the way we cut okay it's like a wobbling issue all right so this is a poor setup from uh, so the engineer must be able to lock the parameter so that everything will go uh, smoothly. There are two dicing technologies in the market. One is the mechanical dicing which is uh, what we have in, in our lab. And the second one is the laser dicing. So what is the difference between mechanical dicing and laser dicing? So mechanical dicing, uh, it produces high chipping during uh, dicing. For laser, it's using uh, lower chipping. However, the weakness, it has a burn mark here. Because it's hot. Alright, number two is a bigger, uh, bigger sawing curve. So laser, smaller sawing curve. Number three, no burn mark beside curve. So for laser, it produces burn mark beside curve. Uh, in terms of machine, uh, it has a lower cost for mechanical dicing. One single spindle uh, price is around USD 150,000 and 250,000 for double spindle. However, for laser, the price is $1 million per machine. So, so it depends on the engineer how to select uh, uh, which one which is the best uh, equipment for uh, its application so that uh, you can know which one uh, is is good for for critical device yeah so not everything that you need to use laser because uh, the, the price is so expensive uh, and mechanic, mechanical dicing also sometimes it can do its jobs but laser dicing is mostly used for critical devices, especially those which have a uh, lower source tree width and uh, require uh, a lower chipping uh, uh, 
issue all right so that's all for today uh, thank you very much